Hey there folks, welcome to the Love Them Knives channel and uh, <laughs> oh my god, we're going down the cold steel road again. I, You know, I've seen this knife a bunch of times and I just, I had to. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but I had to. Yes, I did. Whew, the Black Talon. You know, this reminds me so much of the Spider Co. Civilian. And I had, oh, I had a civilian, you know, back when they did the aluminum with the, with the tough run insert in it and stuff. That's old school stuff. And then I had one of the modern ones and it came in a zippered pouch and everything. This does not come in a zippered pouch. Of course, this is not like, what is that? It's like, a, I don't know what it is, $180 or something for the civilian. This is not, this is not that much. It's like 110 bucks, 109, something like that on Blade HQ. And we have a triad lock in the house. And I got the one that's not serrated, although I think the one that's serrated would be fun and great. It's just, well, I don't know. I mean, I was just saying, but the serrated thing I don't do as far as sharpening stuff. I'm not sure I'm going to do this either. I don't know how well I'm going to do with this. But I don't know that I need to because probably is, you know, my next table sale, it'll be gone to fund future purchases. That's how we roll. Satin blade, four inch blade, CTS, X, HP, Taiwan. Um, you know, so they, I guess they made this talon, and I don't know the whole history of everything, but they made this talon, uh, and then uh, they discontinued it, and then it was, you know, people were saying, ah, oh, got to do this again. So they did, only this time they did the XHP steel, which is, oh God, damn it. I'll tell you what, cold steel, one thing for sure, you can guarantee yourself, is that when you get a knife from Cold Steel, it's just sharp as, I mean, it is sharp. Have we made a mess yet? We got a pile of stuff here. Get out of here. So, <laughs> it is sharp. Really, 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 really sharp. And this little thumb disc is really convenient for opening the knife. And, of course, we had to do the pocket test because that also is a like a wave feature so the back hooks to the back of your pocket because you got it clipped in here and here's your pocket as you're drawing it out it clips in there and then it hooks to that and opens it as you withdraw it out of your pocket which you know at first uh i'm i don't i don't know about this pocket clip here this is tough i mean this pocket clip i cannot move it with my hands with my i mean okay a little bit that is a real stiff clip. And of course, part of that is it's really short. If it was longer, maybe started up here and ended down here, it'd be a longer clip and it'd be more flexible because when I was putting this in my jeans for the first time in my pocket, that baby, uh, it about pushed my jeans down past my butt. Then I'm going, ah! well, never mind. I won't even go there. But. There are some people that like to wear their jeans that way. But no, not me. And <laughs> so, and then pulling it back out of my pocket, my waistline was around my neck. So that's a little tough. <laughs> that's a little tough. Um, but you know what? I, I put it in my pocket in and out, in and out for a while. And it started, I think, to loosen it up. Either that or just wore my pocket away. <laughs> but, you know, and then I couldn't get this wave feature to kick. So when you pull it out of your pocket, you really got to kind of tilt it back. And it's not like the normal Emerson wave, which it really catches a little quicker and easier. But this one, you kind of got to tilt it a little bit further back as you're drawing it out to really intentionally hit the back. And, you know, it just depends on the style of the pocket on your jeans or pants. So, I mean, that's just something you will have to deal with depending on how that's designed, you know, your pocket and everything. But yeah, it will. It'll pull as you withdraw. It'll pull. And so this triad lock, of course, is world famous, super, super strong. But this is so wicked ass sharp. I swear to God, it's crazy sharp. 
And it's a good design. I like it. You know, it's uh, 9 and 5 eighths overall. Look at that 4 inch. So about 10 10 centimeters, a little bit more than that. Actually, doesn't it look a little bit... I mean, if you get out to the tip of here... God bless America. Let's get out to the tip of here. Almost over four inches, really. I mean, it looks like cutting edge almost four inches. Uh, so almost four and eight... I don't want to wear you out with this, but about 10 and a half centimeter blade. And 23... I mean, you know, look at... Uh, almost 25 centimeters overall big knife big knife thickness on the handle not that much four tenths of an inch 10 millimeters blade thickness and you know 3.4 somewhere in there 3.3 if, I, if I'm getting the fattest part, which, who knows? I mean, you know, I can't, I can't get in there. So, we'll just go with this. Yeah. Which is, if we can go inches, it'd be nice. Yeah, 0.13 something. So, it's a little over an eighth of an inch thick. About 3.4 millimeters. 3.33, something like that. But, oh. <laughs> that's scary sharp i really like it in the plain edge and you know what i mean this is ridiculous right i mean you do understand this knife is ridiculous of course it is that's why i like it so much wow oh god now what does this tell you i mean no this is not your fruit knife okay so no this is tactical this is self-defense this is not a practical cutting tool necessarily for a, a lot of different tasks. I mean, really, you want a flat grind and a fairly straight or a little bit of belly coming the other way. Not like this. Might be a good pruner. Pruning human beings. I mean, it's, it's a self-defense knife. It's a tactical knife. And it's a wicked, wicked tactical knife. And it is wicked sharp. And you can cut things, but I mean, I don't see this as a steak knife. Just saying. I mean, yeah, you could cut open a grapefruit. That's for sure. Ah. Oh, pocket clip. Yeah, you can flip that. Right or left hand. Tip up only. On that pocket clip, which, I don't know. I mean, it'd been nice if they would have, you know, brought this up and maybe, you know, like a deep carry where the screws are kind of underneath and they got an opening. You can get your Torx through the opening but the whole thing rolls up and over for a little bit more of a deep carry maybe and that way the clip could still be here but then it could actually be a little bit longer and maybe a little bit more flexible because that's a really short and really not terribly flexible pocket clip it still hangs on and when you try and withdraw it from your pocket you know, um, you're really pulling on here, and it's and it would be better if this slid out a little bit better, so you can kind of get yourself angled, so you can grab the edge of your pocket. But it does work. I mean, I did. I sat. My wife walked in the room. It's like, what the hell are you doing? It's like I'm I'm doing the draw. <sighs> so in any case, so yeah. So then I had to go change furnace filters. She said, I've been calling you, would you? <laughs> no! I'm playing with my cold steel talon. Black talon. And this G10, look at that. That's grippy. You know, um, when I was doing the frenzy, there was a, uh, a, a viewer who made a comment saying, what's the, the texture on that frenzy G10 scale? Is that like the sandpaper type thing? And I go, no, it's not. Is different. And I know what he was talking about. He's talking about this. This is this sandpaper-ish type uh, pattern. So, yes, this is grippy. This is real grippy. Nice. And it feels good in the hand. It's kind of a thin handle. It doesn't really, you know, it's not fat. It doesn't really 
But, you know, it's kind of tall enough this way to, you know, it's not a way, way tall. You know, and that's even taller. So that's one and three eighths. But that's not a lot, is it? I don't know. Although when you close it, check this out. So you're going to have a little bit more height here when you do that. So when it's closed, I mean, it's not like this blade just goes flush with the scale when it's closed. One and three quarter. So that's not still too bad. Let's talk about weight. Because this doesn't feel that heavy. You know, the G10 is pretty light. 4.8. So it's well over nine inches long. Four inch blade. Big, big, big knife. But not that heavy. 4.8. What do we got for grams? 137 grams. Pretty light then. Not bad. Not bad. So let's look at this knife. And compare it maybe to something like this. My Benchmade Contigo, which is like a 4-inch blade. Correct? About the same size. Contigo, big knife. This, big knife. But you can see, look at that. Wow, you're about right on, aren't you? Stroke for stroke. If you straighten that blade out, it'd be another inch long. <laughs> it's crazy. But you know, look at the thickness. It's a lot thinner than the Benchmade. Blade stock looks about the same. This is M390 and $175, something like that, which is really a pretty good deal, actually. Love that knife. Ah, play on words. Love that knife. But, yeah. This one, not so expensive, but oh, that's wicked. That is wicked. And it's a satin grind. Let's see if we got anything else on here we need to talk about. Nope, that's it. And what a luxurious box. And it comes with a barcode. It comes showing you the uh, model number and all that. Black Talon 2. And that's about it. I mean, it came in a little piece of plastic that the knife, little bubble piece of plastic somewhere around here. And that's it. That's what you get, folks. But you get a knife. You get a knife you can really use. And it's real world stuff. And I know the triad lock is, it can be a little frustrating for some people, especially if you have, you know, arthritic hands or you have other issues. But still, that's some tough stuff, isn't it? And, you know, over time, they loosen up. See what I'm saying? I mean, it's not a fidget fun flipper type thing, but, wow, it's the real deal. Big knife, fairly light. CTS, XHP, Carpenter Steel, really great steel, super sharp knife, big, feels good in the hands. You got this traction up here, but you know when it's open, see how the triad lock, see this bar that comes across here, the lock bar? Yeah. That kind of uh, takes away from some of that grip right there because you're seeing... Right there. See how are you gonna get how are you gonna take advantage of this jimping? You don't. It's better when it's closed than when it's open. Eh. Oh well. But the thumb disc is really easy to uh, access. And you got just like G10 back here. Look inside. Nothing much to worry about there. No fancy liners, no extra stuff, but uh, it's tough stuff, isn't it? There's your screws. I don't know about taking these apart. I don't think I've ever taken a cold steel apart. I don't think I've ever had reason to. Looks centered. And yeah, there's no, I mean, there's no play or anything like that. These things are solid. These are crazy solid knives. I don't know. Thought I'd take you down this road because I was impressed with this when I got it. I love that frenzy. Oh, my God. And you know what? I sold that off to keep funding my purchases. But the frenzy's on my bucket list of knives that I want in my permanent collection. 
the frenzy. Yeah. This one, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, if you like that civilian look and you don't want to pay that kind of money, this might be the one for you. I mean, and you got the lock that is going to be solid. And this thing, that thumb disc opens real good. So, you know, the spider hole on the civilian. Yeah, I mean, you can, this is fine. This is just as good and accessible. Really good. Big, wicked knife. Super, super sharp. Thanks for joining me. I mean, I, I love this black talon. I just, uh, yeah, I think it was a good idea when they put this in the uh, carpenter steel. Wow. Oh, it's a tough knife. Tough knife. Really good. If you like them big and bad, there you go. Just remember, we love them knives. Yes, we do. Stay sharp. Sharp like that.